For better or worse, taxation binds together all citizens of a nation, state, or jurisdiction. The contribution of personal resources towards the common good represents a major element of citizenship. Although most citizens do not regard their payment of their taxes in quite the same regard as they view their duties as voters. In contributing to the general welfare, taxes provide a powerful tool for achievement of public policy. Since the application of tax has obvious political and economic ramifications, imposing and raising taxes presents a major political challenge. Many citizens and politicians are inclined to view new tax proposals as the product of government inefficiency. As a result, the burden of proof is always on the proponents of tax increases to convincingly demonstrate that the increases are justified. Since tax systems are designed with a wide variety of purposes in mind, careful design and forethought is required to generate citizen acceptance and avoid numerous unintended consequences. At the center of all discussions of taxes is the principle of fairness and equity. A distinction is commonly drawn between two types of equity, vertical and horizontal. Let's take a look. Vertical equity refers to fairness of tax for both the rich and the poor. The following three terms are used to assess the vertical equity of a given tax. Regressive places the greatest tax burden on those with the least wealth to spend beyond necessities, with the least ability to pay. Proportional, sometimes referred to as a flat tax, distributes the tax burden as a percentage of income or wealth across all groups. And finally, progressive places the greatest tax burden on those with the greatest wealth and ability to pay. Whether regressive, proportional, or progressive in impact, there is further question of whether a tax exhibits horizontal equity. Horizontal equity refers to whether taxpayers who are similarly situated pay similar amounts of tax. Both horizontal and vertical equity are necessary in generating the public's support and compliance. In addition to equity concerns, there is a question of whether tax policy places an undue burden on the population. In the design of taxation systems, the ability to pay principle becomes a vitally important criterion. Under this principle, those with the greatest ability to pay contribute the most tax support. In contrast, the adoption of a benefits received principle places the greatest tax burden on those receiving the greatest program benefits regardless of income. The following is a summary of the major types of taxes and their uses. Income taxes are designed to apply to citizens and to corporations. For citizens, the income tax base includes salary and wages. A series of adjustments, exemptions, and deductions refine the income tax burden to each citizen's situation. The income tax rate structure determines the actual burden carried by each payer. In many states, legislators have linked state tax rules on income adjustments, exemptions, and deductions with corresponding federal regulations. The tax base for a corporate income tax is often defined as corporate net earnings. Refinements to this general tax base include deductions for capital losses, depreciation of capital investments, and spending on research and development. Property taxes rely on the tax base of accumulated wealth. As property owners build new buildings and improve existing ones, property values increase. Generally, whenever local governments improve the level of quality of services, property values increase as well. The property tax captures this increased value of wealth. General sales tax is levied at a single point in the economic exchange process, usually at the retail level between the retailer and the consumer. In contrast to lump sum annual payments of property tax, a general sales tax applies in small incremental rates for each transaction. This spreads the burden over a large number of transactions for each person, thereby making it more tolerable to taxpayers. Because the sales tax is regressive in impact, many states exempt certain basic items like food and prescription drugs from this type of tax. Most state governments rely on a combination of income, sales taxes, and some property taxes to generate a diversified, consistent stream of revenue.